Hi there, this revision video looks at price elastic supply. Well, elasticity of supply measures the responsiveness of supply of a good or service to changes in price. If supply is price elastic, and that's a coefficient of elasticity of supply of more than one, then a small increase in price leads to a larger increase in quantity supplied. Suppliers, producers, manufacturers can respond quickly and easily without a significant rise in cost to price changes. However, if supply is price inelastic, that's a coefficient of elasticity of less than one, a price increase leads to only a small expansion of supply. Uh, suppliers finding it hard for one reason or another to, to change production in the short term. So what tends to make supply price elastic? Well, first of all, spare production capacity. So if a business isn't using all of their resources, the factory space, for example, they can quite easily ramp up production. So a, a factory running at 70% capacity has 30% spare capacity uh, to utilise. Secondly, stocks. If businesses hold stocks, both of raw materials, components and finished products, they can supply more quickly and easily when prices and demand go up. That's especially common in sectors with non-perishable goods, for example, uh, tinned food. The ease of switching production is another key factor. So if a business can shift their resources between products, supply becomes more flexible. A farmer might be able to switch between different crops, wheat and barley, for example, uh, between growing seasons. And the production time frame. So the quicker a product can be made and brought to market, the more price elastic supply will be. Manufactured goods, like tinned food, for example, often have a more price elastic supply than things like wine, which takes time to age. So drawing a diagram, here's a price elastic supply curve. Initial equilibrium at price P1 and Q1. If demand shifts out from D1 to D2, because supply is price elastic, then supply can expand quite easily from Q1 to Q2 with only a small increase in price. So good examples would be things like smartphones, especially entry-level smartphones. Uh, they're open to mass production and fast production. Businesses have built up diversified global supply chains, which allow a quick response to demand changes. Fast fashion is a really good example. Uh, companies like Zara, for example, can turn a very quick turnaround from initial design to store. High volume, low cost, rapid production are key features of fast fashion. Packaged food, we've already mentioned this, things like canned beans, pasta, the production of bottled water and yoghurt. It's mass produced, heavily automised production processes, and in theory it should be easy to scale up quickly if there's a significant increase in demand. Although that does depend on the spare capacity in manufacturing plants. And also a long shelf life. So tinned food, for example, can be stored in large quantities before it reaches its sell-by date. Of course, you can go to the extreme. This is a perfectly elastic supply curve. And this basically means the firm can supply goods and services at the same marginal cost. So if demand increases from D1 to D2, the firm can increase output from Q1 to Q2 without any need for an increase in price. Few questions to test your understanding. Have a go at these ones. Which of the following factors is least likely to contribute to price elastic supply? What do you think the answer is to question one? Press the pause button and have a go. So which factor is least likely to make supply price elastic? The answer is highly specialised labour requirements that can't be shifted from one job to another. Why is the supply of fast fashion clothing typically considered price elastic? Have a go, please, at question two. And the answer is design and manufacturing are highly automated and there's a very short lead time from initial design to manufacturing with efficient logistics getting these fashion items into the shops. Question number three. Which of these industries is most likely to exhibit price inelastic supply in the short term. Smartphones, fast food, airline seats, t-shirt printing. And the answer to question three is airline seat availability. There's often a limited capacity on flights. 
uh, the, the root network is established, the airline timetables are built in. It's not always easy to increase the number of seats that can be made available to customers. There we go. Thanks for joining in this video on price elastic supply.